My name is Robert Reed with the Houston Rockets, and I would like to encourage you, the youth of Fort Wayne, Indiana, to watch Hackonomics because I believe that it will help you and your future in the fact of preparing yourself stably as um, educational, uh, prepare you for your training as a young professional in life, but more importantly, it's going to broaden your ideas of what's happening in your community here in Fort Wayne and what's happening around in your country for the fact that you as a listener and reader of Hackonomics, uh, it's definitely going to broaden your views on preparing yourself for this, what's happening in this world. Thank you. Our second guest this evening is Mr. Robert Reed of the Houston Rockets. Robert, you're not from Fort Wayne. How did you find out, how, how did you and Walter Jordan meet? Well, it was about three years ago that uh, I was visiting friends here in North Manchester, Indiana, and you kind of get a little bored and you want to find a good game, so you know, now you come to Fort Wayne after hearing a lot of, there are a lot of uh, talent here as far as high school and college players. So you're out on the outdoor court one day and you run into Walter and you start talking and you find out that he had just got drafted by a team and he's trying to make it at that time. And then he invited me to come back for the uh, first game for myself. Uh, and that was up when we were playing at uh, for the IPU University here in town. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And it was more or less, hey, Walt, if you want me to come back, it'd be my honor, my pleasure. And right now, it turns out that during the course of the season, a lot of guys, you know, as you talk about it, you know, they found out, hey, Fort Wayne treats you well, they take care of the players, and the, the community accepts you. A lot of guys want to come down here. Okay, um, you know, uh, this is your second game that you've been in so far. You know, uh, what, what, what do you think about that kind of a concept, you know, where Walt has different stars coming together and, and raising money? How is that, how do you see that being motivational for the community? I see the motivation for the community is for the fact that you have a lot of young kids who are sitting in the living room or reading a Sports Illustrated or TV and seeing, you know, the Robert Reed, the uh, Ray Talbert, Alan Leverard, McCray, and others, you know, a host of other guys who are out there, and they're saying, hey, they're here in our town. And so you're getting the young people that who are involved in it, and you're getting the older adults that uh, say, hey, let's go out and see some good basketball talent. You don't take credit away from the fact that even though you are playing in Indiana, and you have a lot of Indiana people here who pride themselves on being knowledgeable about the game of basketball, not the fact that it is a named player, but the talent that goes with that player. And uh, I see that as really helping the community grow in that aspect. Okay, now, before you guys play tonight, there was a bunch of high school uh, all-stars out there playing. Now, you know, now, all those um, all-stars won't be able to have a chance to play college and play pro ball. What advice can you give the, 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 the students with this marginal talent? The student who has that marginal talent, if they want a prime example, is myself. Okay, I was not, when I graduated from high school, I had two schools after me in Texas. And uh, it was a matter of me working myself to improve myself each year. I think that marginal player, or even that top athlete, say those kids who were playing, give respect to the young man who's coming up behind you, okay? Because he's gonna have that desire that he wants to be there. Uh, as myself, when I was a rookie in 77, when I came and I stepped on the practice floor for the first time, what was in my mind and our heart, my heart was, Somebody's either going to sit on the bench or somebody's gone from the Houston Rockets because I'm going to be here. So I have to still give that respect to the incoming rookie, and I have to make sure that I'm on top of my game. And uh, never let nobody say, your game reminds me of Larry Bird or of Marcus Johnson. Or that's wrong. Never copy your game after anybody. Be yourself. You know, it, it comes to this point that you take a young man that's out there who in the high school game this evening, now, if we're just walking down the street, and instead if he tries to walk the same footsteps I got, mine are longer, he's going to get tired and he's going to start lagging behind. But you got to take your own pace of what you can do, and you'll find out you can achieve a whole lot more. I have one last question for you about your basketball team, Houston Rockets. Uh, how do you see, how do you think they'll, they'll be finishing uh, next year? Well, hopefully <laughs> we'll do more to 29 victories as we did this past, and uh, definitely we don't want to be in another coin flip for the last place team. I think that with the addition of uh, King uh, from
from University of Houston with up front with Ralph there. That's going to give us the type of um, uh, power that we really need. You see, you have a center and a king, you have a power forward and a center in Ralph that both of them can fill a hole and both of them get the rebound. Uh, and then you just have to really say, like the rest of us, have to mold ourselves around those guys that go out and play. A lot of people are saying that maybe the two people can't play together, but I don't believe in that. I believe that you're going to have two talented young men who are going to realize the whole world is watching them, and they're going to have to immediately go out and compliment each other and not get into the back, hey, I need the ball all the time. Uh, when you're winning games, players will tell you, when you're winning games, it don't matter how many points you hit, you know, fine. If I go through a whole season, average two points, and if we can win the championship, what, the first guy I got averaging 23 points or whatever, and my two points, we all get the same thing in the end, and that's what the whole game's about. You know, given that you can't play basketball forever, what do you plan to do once your career is over? Well, right now, I like to look into, uh, uh, since I sat out a year, I got into retail, managing a store as a manager, um, and so now I kind of know how to handle that area, you know, as a manager like that. I may be looking into working in the television a little bit. Uh, just a lot of things that I feel that is open to me that I don't like to be stereotyped as a jock, that he's a good basketball player, but what can he do off the floor? Uh, I have a lot of ideas, and I think those are ideas that are not big dreams that you say are so far off that you can't grasp them, but I think they're ideas and uh, dreams that are right in your grip of your hand. You just have to really get a good foothold on it, and um, that's what I'm really looking to do, whether it be television, uh, the news reporter, or whatever, or uh, get in my own store, you know, something like that. But I, I really have to just put in the good Lord's hand, pray about it, and something's going to come along. Okay. Marie, uh, thanks a lot for the interview, and good luck in your pro career. Thank you. Okay.